Uh, your alkene reactions are one of the biggest topics in organic chemistry. Oh, the alkene has got the pi bond and it's so reactive it can do so much. Okay. In terms of making compounds, doing synthesis, uh, alkene reactions. It's also your first look at reactions. So that's going to make it even more challenging. When we get to S and substitution reactions for test three, well, you'll be more in the groove of okay, doing mechanisms and stuff. Right now you have a challenge of uh, coming up to speed on mechanisms, doing reactions, learning how to study when we're doing reactions, etc. Uh, we're going to be going through the material, but at, at some point we'll sort of start doing some review. Right now we don't have a lot of context to review, I'm just presenting material. Now. Need to be working on it, and then as we move forward, we'll talk about how to put stuff more in context. Okay, uh, we were looking at what we have an outline. What were we looking at? Ah, electrophilic addition reactions in alkenes, remedy number one, addition of HX, hydrohalogenation. I believe we pretty much did that, although we need to look at some examples. Page. <coughs> okay, if there's no questions, let's look at the second page. Uh, predict the products. We have an alkene. Yes, the alkene double bond is part of the ring, but no problem. Okay, here's your alkene. ACL. Alkenes react with HX to give what type of product? Alkyl halide. Okay, so that's going to the first step. What type of reaction are we doing? Well, that right there. So we only have looked at one reaction. Well, once we have a reaction, then you got to look and see well, what are we doing? Right now it's hydrohalogenation. Okay. Addition, this is going to add an addition of the ACL to the pi bond. The question is, is the chlorine going to end up on top or bottom? Because we're adding the ACL, the terminology, across the pi bond. And right now we're not doing any rearrangements, so we're going to have an H on one of these pi bonds and the chlorine on the other. But which, where does the chlorine go, top or bottom? Top. Top. Very good, yes. Why top? Because that's where we're going to make a tertiary carbocation. Mechanistically, we can do this covalently or ionically. I'll just I'll do it ionically. My bond attacks H plus. We're going to attack like this. That is, here's the pi bond. It's going to break away from the top carbon and go attack the H leaving the top carbon without the pi bond. That's what I'm showing here. Okay, mechanistically, I'm thinking mechanistically. I'm not just pulling a product out of the air. <coughs> New H here, right? I'm gonna draw it in. What's at the top now? A plus charge, because it's missing a bond. All we did is, somebody pulled my finger. Boom, you pulled it down. So we showed an arrow pulling it down, making a bond to the H leaving the top carbon plus. Why there? Because it's tertiary. And thus, this intermediate is going to be more stable than if we went the other way. That is, if I had it like this and the pi bond broke away from the bottom and went up and attacked like that. If we had attacked the other way, I'm not going to show that arrow. Put the H up there and the plus down here. Right? That comes from, here's the pi bond. This way, the pi bond breaks away from the bottom carbon, it goes to text the H, leaving the bottom carbon plus. That's not as good. It's secondary. That's going to be a higher energy intermediate. Tertiary is the way it's going to go. Now, what's the next step? Well, then the chlorine, bam. These electrons 
add to the carbocation these electrons bond here, and we get our final product. Three lone pairs on the chlorine, because the other lone pair made a bond to the uh, carbon. Is this reaction regioselective? Yes. This would be called the major major regioisomer. If it, if it had gone this way, we would have ended up with fluorine where? Chlorine would attack down here because chlorine attacks cation. Now we could call this minor. Uh, uh, I'm going to say negligible if I can spell it. And this, for this particular reaction, is pretty negligible. Uh, Regio isomer. Regio isomers are actually constitutional isomers. They have different connectivity. But in the context of this reaction, as two possible outcomes, they're called regio isomers. Because here the chlorine bonded at this region, here it bonded at this region. So the regio isomer term, just as we use it as part of the context of the reaction. Ultimately, they're two different constitutional isomers. Um, okay, so this is the product that we predict. And usually on my quiz or the test, it'll say predict the major organic product. This is it. Uh, how much does this actually form? Sometimes it can be more than just nothing. In this particular case, it's pretty much very, very, very much. Um, what happened to hydrogen? The hydrogen? What happened to the hydrogen? Oh, it's there. Oh, it's still there. Oh, you just okay. Yeah. Remember, I said I'll draw, I drew in the new one. It's there. How many here? Two. I mean, if I can connect the bonds. There's two there, right? Right. Oh. I mean, how many is here? One. One? How many here? One. No, there's two oh, there. Oh, two, two. Two there. Yeah. There's two there. Okay. I just drew in the new one. Okay? Good. You got to know where the H's are. I mean, there's two there, but I don't need to draw them in, do I? I know there's two there. Because if there ain't two there, there better be a charge. And if I ain't showing a charge, then that's my problem. Okay, so what's the product of the next one? How'd we do on that one? Everybody tried these over the weekend and then use your textbook to help figure them out? Good. Okay, how about this guy? Uh, alkene, HX, is hydrogenation. We're going to make cation on left or right? The left. If we make cation over here, it would be primary. If we make cation over here, it would be secondary. Secondary is more stable, right? Everybody knows why, you know? Uh, product here will be... That's there. Mechanistically... I bond attacks H plus, leaving cation here, and then iodine attacks cation. It's just a two-step mechanism. But the regio chemistry is based on the stability of the intermediate. Would you rather make cation here or here? There you go. Um, is this reaction regio selected? Yes. Yeah. What would be the other possible, other theoretically possible product? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. That right there? No. One, two, three, four, five. There's five carbons here, right? Common problem is for products to be shown without even five carbons. That's only one, two, three, four carbons.
This is where we add the, this is where the H is here and the iodine is here. We're not going to get that. It's very minor to negligible. Uh, both of these first two are regioselective. How about the next one? Do we want to make cation on left or right? Make cation over here, it will be what substitution? Secondary. Secondary. If you make it here, what will it be? Secondary. So which is going to be favorite, secondary or secondary? Either one of them. There's not going to be any selectivity. We could get two different products. I'll draw them over here. We could get I done here or I done there and H here or H here. But where do these come from? They come from the cation. Two different possible cations. The pi bond can attack H here, leave cation over there, or we can attack here and leave cation over here. Which cation is going to be favored? Both secondary. And so there's no favorite here. And the product comes from just iodine attacking the cation. Uh, neither. Now, there may be some argument of one might be favored, but we would have to get into some unique arguments. But what we have presented and will present, neither favored uh, reaction is not regioselective. That all depends on what regioselective means. For example, if you get one in 51% yield, the other in 49% yield, would you call that regioselective? Some people might. They would say, hey, We've got more selectivity for this one over that one. Well, in practicality, though, that ain't, that's, that's no selectivity. <coughs> so it all kind of depends on. So, I mean, you may get this one in 55 and this one in 45. I don't know. It's a flip of a coin, or uh, there could be some other things. But here's the, here's the straightforward. Is this going to be as selective as this one up here? There's, there's an easy answer. This is not as selective, nowhere near as selective as these two are going to be. Because here you have a, a tertiary cation that's much more favored over the secondary. Here they're both secondary. Um, so in the introductory level, we say that this is not going to be regioselective. Um, and in the end, practically, this is going to be sort of a messy synthesis. It's it's going to give two, two products, and you're going to have to uh, separate these somehow. Maybe they'll separate by distillation. Maybe it will be difficult to separate. Um, where up here, you may get a 95% yield of this one and only 5% of the other, and you can easily separate out a good product, a pure product. Um, in terms of synthesis, you need to be able to go backwards. Synthesis. Synthesis is a type of problem where you're given a product and say, hey, show the synthesis. What reaction would give this? But usually you want to make sure that your reaction is going to be high yielding as possible. You want to make sure that your reaction is regioselective as much as possible. How would you synthesize this here? What do you want to call this? Two bromo pentane? Two bromo pentane? How would you synthesize it? Can you, can you give a reaction? By the way, right now it's just one reaction because we know we're going to start. What type of compound are we going to start with? Alkene. Alkene. Yeah. Well, that's all we've done so far. We'll do a lot more by Wednesday and Friday. But you get into organic two, you'll have all types of reactions, and also it'll be multi-step. 
may have to put together like a half a dozen reactions to give a problem. Okay? But to get to that point, we sort of have to master the beginning. So, what alkene would you like to show? One pentene. You want to name it? Good. One pentene. One pentene. So, one pentene should be one, two, three, four, five. That's one pentene. Okay, and you want to react it with what? HDR. That's kind of duh huh, right? I mean, right now it is. Maybe down the road when you have uh, a variety of possible reagents. Um, okay, is there another possible alkene we could use? Actually, yeah, let's at least consider it. What about 2-pentene? What would be Regio selected? Could we theoretically do this though? Yes. We would, we would envision the pi bond attacking H, make bond here, leave cation here, and then bromine attack. But is cation going to prefer to be here, left or right? It's going to be either. Why would he prefer that? Why would he prefer that secondary and not this secondary? There's no preference. Over here, is it going to prefer left or right? Right. It's going to prefer right, which is where we want the cation, because only if you have the cation there is the bromine going to add there. Yes, this is going to be your preferred because it's regioselective. And if your job was to make that product, you would want to make it from this one pentane wanted a good yield, then you wanted to maybe keep your job or, or anything. Um, alkene nomenclature, this is uh, one pentene. Does this have a pair uh, isomer possible? Everybody watch the alkene video? Does this have a stereoisomer possible? Is this thing on? <laughs> uh, those, those should be simple, uh, simple questions. Need to rewatch the Alpine video. Okay, so this is the way we would do. How about this guy? Can you show a synthesis of that? What alkene do you want to use? And I think we're going to react it with ACL. And there's actually two different regioselective syntheses that can be shown. Show both of them. I can take this alkene, react with ACL. What's the name of this alkene? One cyclohexene. One what? One methyl. One methyl cyclohexene. Yeah, one methyl cyclohexene. Yes. Uh, what other alkene could we use? Would this be regio selective? Would, would cation, carbocation form on left or right? left at the tertiary carbon. So you envision these electrons attacking their H plus. Here we go. Here's a pi bond. Here's an H plus over here. Go make a bond to it, leaving this the plus, and then chlorine attacks the plus. Chlorine attacks the plus. That new bond is over there because there's two H's there now. There's only one there. All right. What other alkene? Somebody else have an alkene? Another alkene that could be used? 
combine two methods at the maximum. You want to name it? Two methods at the maximum. Two methyl cyclohex. Two methyl cyclohexing. There's no such compound. Try to draw that. It's, that's a wrong name for me. There's no such compound as two methyl cyclohexing. Make sure you understand what. Somebody else have? The pi bond would just be on the other side of the metal. On the other side? Like that? Yes. That's the same thing as this. Uh, this, is, this is also one methyl cyclohexane. It's just flipped around. Just like that's that's a left hand, but that's also a left hand. The pi bond can be on the metal. Uh, where? Yes, yes, yes. What if we put the pi bond up like that to the top part? You understand the nomenclature why these are the same? Yes. How do you know they're the same? Well, one way is to name them. If you name them, it's going to be the same exact name. It means it's the same thing. Just like you understand how that's, is that a left or right hand? Left hand. How about that? That's still left hand. Uh, yeah, like this was HCl. Are you going to make cation top or bottom? Bottom. bottom. These two reactions have the same exact intermediates. They actually have the same exact intermediate. Make sure you see that. Both of those get the same exact tertiary carbocation intermediate. Now later on we may learn that this may react faster. Okay. Questions on those? Now I didn't show the retrosynthetic arrow. A lot of times when you're doing synthesis, you go backwards and you say, hey, I can go backwards. And the double line arrow means I'm going backwards to say, hey, I'm going to go backwards to this alkene. And this is called a retrosynthesis or retrosynthetic arrow. It means I'm going backwards. And I can maybe back up to something very simple. Coming forward, I would say, boom, I can react that with HBr and go forward. So we'll use retrosynthetic arrows as we go along. Indicate you're going backwards. So this is actually the starting point. Going back to the starting point, right? Okay. Uh, which, which is favorite at the bottom? I uh, want you to think about that more. Ultimately, we're asking which carbocation is going to be favored. That's what we're really asking. Would you rather make cation at top or bottom? <coughs> ah, this is an oxygen. If you make cation at the bottom, you're going to, I mean, at the uh, bottom, you would get this product, with the BR added to the bottom. Front page, we talk about carbocation stability, tertiary, secondary, primary, and then methyl is your least stable. But other things can also affect carbocation stability, such as resonance. add water to the alkene. When you add water, it's called a hydration. And this is going to give an alcohol as a product. 
not an alkyl halide. Hydration of an alkene is a mutually important reaction. Now, first off, there's no reaction without an acid catalyst. Alkene will not react with pure water. It won't do anything with pure water. But it will do something with H+, like it did with like HCl. It will attack H+. When we see H+, that typically implies it came from a strong acid. H+, is from a strong acid. Water is not a source of H+. That's where we get into, well, it can be, but it's not sufficiently strong. Usually when you see H+, when you talk about acid, you're talking about a truly good acid. And for these reactions, typically a strong acid, like HBr. Okay. Water's not a strong enough acid to do anything. It's, you know, we have to have an H plus catalyst. And so if we have water and an H plus catalyst, we can get a reaction and you end up adding water to the alkene because there's two H's on the end, but now there's three. So there's a new H ended on the end. And we've added H2O across the pi bond. Hydrated the pi bar. Okay? We had to have an H plus catalyst. And this is typically a strong acid. Strong acid catalyst. Now, first of all, these two are often written like this if you combine them. H3O plus. That's water and strong acid. So it could be written like that. Examples of strong acids include sulfuric acid, but also phosphoric acid and HF. These are actually strong enough to be strong acids. But you don't want to use HX as your acid catalyst. Because if you use HX, you'll end up getting hydrocalogenation. Like what we're just doing. <laughs> you want to use these acids. The good thing about these acids is they only supply H+, and the anion doesn't ever do anything. The sulfate, the phosphate, the F- will not do anything. They will not act as nucleophiles. Okay, here's our mechanism. Usually when you have an H plus catalyst, the first thing in the mechanism is going to be to react with that H plus. I can show my acid is ionized. That's fine to just start with that. Have you ever seen an alkene attack H plus? Yeah, that's what we were doing when we attacked the HBr. We attacked the H plus. So it's the same first step. My bond attacks H plus. Are we going to leave cation on right or left? Right. Left. If we make cation over here, it would be primary. If we put cation over here, it would be tertiary. Tertiary is better. We're going to get this cation, right? Tertiary. And so here's the pi bond drawn on the board. It breaks away from this part, but it goes attacks the H. And now I've got a bond to H drawn here, leaving that cation as a cation because it only has three bonds, but that's where you want cation because it's tertiary. If I had done this way and left that as cation, that would have been primary. That would not be as stable. And it would be a higher energy. So this is really nothing new than what we were looking at. But next is we do not have a halogen like uh, like Cl minus or Br minus. So what can attack cation? What attacks it is water. And these electrons add to the cation. Just like if you're forming uh, Br minus added to the cation. And when the oxygen makes bond to carbon, 
sometimes I like to highlight what bond I made. Just made that bond right there, yeah? Oxygen, lone pair, made bond to carbon. But guess what? There's still two H's here. This is an intermediate. <coughs> to get the final product, we have to remove an H from the water. Now, we'll have to talk about this next step because I sort of abbreviated it a little bit. We'll talk about it. Something takes the H, and these electrons move on to oxygen as a second lone pair. What can take the H? I usually show the conjugate base of the strong acid taking the H. HSO4 minus, which if you drew it out, structure and we say these electrons because every time you move it you do an arrow you start by saying what these electrons these electrons attack H plus these electrons attack carbocation these electrons attack make bond to H these electrons between the O and the H move on to oxygen as the second lone pair so oxygen now has two lone pairs, and now this oxygen is bonded to the H. That gives these two products, and this becomes H2SO4. Now, I usually let you get away by just kind of drawing this here and having a generic arrow coming this way. Um, maybe I shouldn't let you get away with that. But in most of my answer keys, I sort of do that. Because it's sort of complex, it's, I don't <coughs> take time to draw it out. But this is it here. <coughs> this is actually not strictly correct. You can also use water as the base and have H2O taking the H and leaving this behind. If water took the H, you would get this plus what? H3O plus, if water took the H. Now that's actually strictly more correct because how does sulfuric acid exist in water? It's ionized. I mean, that's how it actually exists in water. So using water is actually strictly more correct. But I like to use the conjugate base of the acid so I can reform the actual state in acid. But actually, isn't that the definition of a catalyst? That is, it's not consumed. This is our catalyst. And it's reformed. But you've got to understand that how does sulfuric acid actually exist in water? It's really H3O plus and sulfate minus, right? Okay. So, need to be able to deal with that. Now, as we move forward, I won't discuss all that. I'll just do it as shown. Questions about any of that? So how many intermediates in this reaction? Two? Two intermediates. This is an intermediate, right? discrete structure, but it's not final product. Both of these are charged. You have to remove the H. A lot of times I see students just do this and say, hey, there's my product. And I'm like, well, hold on. This oxygen has two H's. What happened to the other H? Because our mechanism has to show every step of everything. You can't just say, oh, well, the H disappeared. Mechanism has to account for everything. Questions about that mechanism? So hydration of an alkene. If an alcohol, this alcohol, it's actually called a tertiary alcohol because the OH is on a tertiary carbon. Now later on, we'll actually do the reverse of this reaction during test three. 
very common reaction is to take an alcohol and dehydrate it, remove water to make an alkene. That will be a test three reaction. And when we do that, it will be just the opposite. It will be just a reverse. We will start with the alcohol, we will protonate the OH, the water will leave to give the cation, and then we'll eliminate an H to give the alkene. It'll be just the reverse during test three. So this reaction can go actually go both ways, and this would be shown as a reverse reaction where you start with the alcohol and you make the alkene. Of course, right now we're doing this way, where we're hydrating the alkene to get the alcohol. Okay, can you predict product? First, what's the product of the first reaction? So the nucleophile being like halide, what's the nucleophile? Water. All right, see water acting as a nucleophile, attacking the carbocation. Everybody knows what definition of a nucleophile is, right? What's the definition of a nucleophile? It likes positive charge. Yeah, you see the water liking that positive charge? That's why it's attacking. The water's called a nucleophile. The only difference in this and the previous reaction is here the nucleophile is water, in the previous reaction it was halide, like Cl minus. You've got to see the consistencies in these reactions. So, does someone have a product here? <coughs> ah, H3O plus, what is that? Well, that's water and strong acid, right? That's what I showed you. Water and strong acid. Does anybody have a product here? Two pentanol. Tell me again. Two pentanol. Uh, it's two pentanol. Uh, we haven't really officially learned that. You, you can also call this maybe two hydroxy pentane. Uh, but yeah, it's two pentanol. Because where are you going to make cation, left or right? You see, we're under Roman numeral A, and all of these reactions involve a what? Carbocation intermediate. And the regiochemistry is driven by where you're going to make the carbocation intermediate. We'll make it on the left. And then what adds to the cation? In this react water. But then you have to lose the H from the OH to get a neutral product. Yeah, there's your product. Uh, let's consider stereochemistry chemistry of this product. This is so-called chiral carbon. That carbon is tetrahedral. Two in the plane, one forward, one back. Not three in the plane. It's tetrahedral. <coughs> that is... Boop, boop, boop. There's two in the plane. We need to draw, if we're going to be strictly correct, the OH either forward or back. I can draw it forward. Or I can draw it back. Because it's tetrahedral. Which one's going to be forward? that more precise stereotype to which one's going to be for? Both. It's going to be a 50-50. It's going to be 50-50. We'll talk about this later. 
but this sort of just sets the little foreshadowing. Something to have in your notes. Something maybe you can read ahead about. Okay. Let's try the next one. This is a little bit different. It's a variation, but we need to be able to handle variations. I got an alkene. I got HF, and it says dry ethanol. I think I want you to do this on your own. This is just the same thing except alcohol instead of water. And what do you think HF might be for? What? Yeah, this is, this is just a catalyst. Basically, this is ethanol in H plus catalyst. <coughs> Please look at that one, and uh, Wednesday we'll uh, see. Let's look at the next uh, page. HX. If you take this alkene, react with HBr, you might expect to get this product as the major product. Where are you going to make cation at, top or bottom? Bottom. Bottom. And then Br attacks bottom, you get that product. Actually, in this case, that's not the major product. The major product is actually where the Br ends up bonded over here. How does the bromine bond over here? The pi bond is not even over there, connected to that current. How does this happen? The pi bond over the... It's a carbocation rearrangement. Yeah. Carbocation rearrangement. We have time to get into this? I don't think so. Please, please do this. Carbocation rearrangement. You're first going to form a carbocation. To show that mechanism. You need to look at where all the H's are at. Has a hydrogen from the original backbone skeleton moved? Etc. This, we also have ring, ring expansions, and then we have more reactions. Guys, this is critically important that you make substantial progress this week on these reactions. If you let time go by, it will build up and it will become too late as we get near the test. Substantial progress. Have a good day, guys.